following program is recorded content created by the Truth Network. It's Matt Slick Live. Matt is the founder and president of the Christian Apologetics Research Ministry, found online at CARM.org. When you have questions about Bible doctrines, turn to Matt Slick Live for answers. Taking your calls and responding to your questions at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. All right, everyone. Welcome to the show. It's me, Matt Slick. It's the Matt Slick Live. For those of you who might be new to the show, Slick is my real last name. And it kind of works for a radio show, uh, Matt Slick Live. If you want to give me a call, five open lines. All I have to do is dial 877-207-2276. Now, um, got a, some things we're going to talk about. And after the second break, we'll talk about, or after the break, uh, we'll talk about some car business and stuff like that. But I want to open up with the issue of what happened in um, in Texas today. A lot of you may or may not know, but uh, there was a, a shooting at an elementary school. The police were chasing somebody, and uh, an 18-year-old, he went into a, an elementary school and shot and killed 14 students and one teacher. And he was an 18-year-old, and now he's gone. He's dead. And so, um, you know, I want to be careful about this because, uh, you know, why do things like this happen? Why does God let them happen? He allows them to happen uh, for many reasons, but uh, one is because we have been given given our sovereignty, not sovereignty from God, but our reign uh, in this world. We are allowed to do as we desire, and the consequences of that sin um, result in things like this. So were there mass shootings in the 40s and 50s in schools and in malls and things like that, shopping areas? No, there weren't. But the left has taken God out of our lives, out of our schools, out of society, out of movies. The left has left a vacant uh, area in our society and filled it with a moral relativism and the approval of violence in movies, in BLM riots where people uh, loot and pillage and don't get punished. And so the pervasive feeling, so to speak, that is kind of out there is, is uh, you can get away with stuff. And what's going to happen, we know, is that the left is going to use this to punish the law-abiding. They're going to want to take away the gun rights of the law-abiding because someone who uh, was crazy did something. And it was tragic. And so this is something we've we got to be aware of. We've got to pray. Uh, we prayed, uh, the three of us, Laura and Charlie and I, before the show, we prayed for uh, the people there, the situation. And uh, it's a truly sad thing. It, it is a sad thing. And uh, we'll get more details as time goes on. But you mark my words. The left is going to use it to confiscate our weapons, to try to confiscate, put more restrictions on the good people. And they can't see that the solution is not by tying the hands it's by changing the heart but their hearts are wicked they don't understand that when the Lord is in you that the goodness within your hearts the Lord Jesus stops your hand you see we need to return to the things of God but the left doesn't want it the left wants its fornications and its pornography and its violence and its hypocrisy and its socialism and communism and oppression and power and when things go wrong they will use a, a, a situation to gain more power to enslave more people and restrict their freedoms all the while saying that they are the ones who are the moral ones doing what's right and they can't see. They can't see that their denial of the true and living God, they're exercising him of society and culture, politics, schools, entertainment, getting rid of him and his foundational truths of loving God and loving your neighbor and being accountable to him 
these things are no longer in place in our society and so the void is filled with the the tragedies of our own hearts filled with varying forms of evil now there are a lot of good people out there but when the weak when the crazy when the insane dare I say demonically oppressed act then those who have contributed to that with their policies and their negation of the truth of who God is and his goodness and why we need him in society those who have helped build that vacuum then punish inadvertently or on purpose those who are guiltless in this they want control and ultimately you have to understand something that's very important here I'm going to go to Ephesians chapter 6 and remind us all of what the scriptures teach us verse 12 for our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against rulers against the powers against the world forces of this darkness against the spiritual forces of weakness in the heavenly places now coincidentally it's interesting that uh, we're talking about this uh, it's such a tragedy but I'm rewriting my novel uh, the influence I'm gonna re-release it and I just went through the section where the character leech is possessed and the thoughts of the demonic force in my fictional novel the thoughts of this demonic force speak into the mind of this this uh, this poor man and it thinks it's doing good when it's doing evil he thinks he's doing right and so pain and suffering are the result and it's just kind of interesting because as the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against powers and principalities it's not saying that men and women aren't sinful and don't have their sinful natures but the ultimate battle is against these spiritual forces and we need to be very aware of this there are spiritual uh, forces that are all around us according to the revelation of Scripture the Word of Jesus Christ the revelation of the New Testament and we need to be aware and we need to be praying appropriately and for those people in Uvalde uh, Texas who have suffered such a great loss you know I, I can only hope I can only hope and pray that in God's grace that uh, though he allowed this to occur that their hearts are not darkened and that they don't turn from him but that they recognize instead what the presence of evil does when you get rid of God then this is the consequence this is the effect may they see and turn to God may they turn to him and uh, that's what my prayer is for them uh, and we are so sorry uh, for those people who are suffering you know mom and moms and dads who have dropped their kids off at an elementary school only to get a call or see on the news uh, the tragedy at their elementary school and then they rush there and just the incredible pain and loss of the death of a child and I know I've experienced it and it's just horrible it's horrible and my heart breaks with them and for them but we need we need to pray uh, ladies and gentlemen we need to pray as Christians for the binding of the evil one and for the work of the kingdom of God to occur in society and that our own country would repent and turn from its wickedness and reinstate God where he's supposed to be in our society only through him can we find ultimate truth and ultimate morals but without him then everything is relative and those in power who deny him but give him lip service only for their convenience to gain power and those who don't know him and don't believe in the absolutes of truth and moral truth what will happen is they will use circumstances and sin and tragedy and death to gain more power based upon their whims of what is right and wrong what they think is true and because of that 
this is why things are getting worse. So we as Christians need to repent and not put our trust or our faith in government or in the trucks that bring food to the stores that we go buy. We don't need to trust, uh, put our trust in those things, but our trust needs to be in Jesus Christ. And we need to turn to him. And all of us in the Christian church need to do that. We need to pray for the repentance of this country, the renewal of this country. And we Christians are the ones who are responsible for praying that. The unbelievers won't. Therefore, it falls on us. And we should all be praying it regularly for the repentance of our country, for a sweep, a movement, a pouring of the Holy Spirit upon this nation, and that people would come to repentance and turn to him. That is what is needed. Yeah, sorry for the... Um, for the, the the downer opening today but because of this tragedy uh, in in Texas and I'm looking at uh, a headline Uvalde Texas shooting school shooting 14 students one teacher killed suspected shooter dead governor Abbott says and then a subheading Salvador Romas 18 killed multiple children and teacher in an elementary school a, a small city located 80 miles west of San Antonio. More details are going to be coming, of course. And, uh, man, it's horrible. Well, having said that, if any of you dare want to call, um, the number is 877 Please give me a call. We could talk about that or talk about whatever you want to talk about. And, um, I just want to uh, just you know, offer that. So there you go. All right. Uh, may the Lord bless this show today. Let's just get on the air. I'm going to jump right on with Alberto from Georgia. Hey, Alberto. Welcome, buddy. You're on the air. Yes. Go ahead, uh, Master Lake. Uh, my question is, why do Pentecostals teach that uh, we're going to keep ourselves in Christ Jesus when the Bible of Christ says once we accept Christ? He dwells in us permanently forever. So why they have to teach with the Romans chapter 8 that says that there's no more convention those who are in Christ Jesus. Basically, the kids teach like, we've we got to keep yourself in Christ Jesus, but no, not going to be okay, wait, wait, so what's your question? I'm not sure I'm following your question. Yes, Give my, it, you, my question I, is, do we, have, do we have to keep ourselves in Christ Jesus in order, to, or in order, to, or in order for not to be condemned? No, we don't do the Christ work Jesus. of keeping ourselves saved. Uh -huh. And that's, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. we, we don't do that work. Uh, God is faithful. He indwells us. He has guaranteed that we will not fail. Those who are truly redeemed. We don't want, don't want to take credit for what God is doing. But the Pentecostals often, because they teach you can lose your salvation, will then teach that you keep it by your obedience, your submission, your goodness, and your faithfulness. And so it's very problematic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, because they, they think by, by your holy living that that you're gonna get yourself into heaven. Basically, like you just say by faith the moment you get saved, but then after that, you gotta by your own holy living, they think yourself into heaven. And Christ, that's right. Death, that's what they say. Or resurrection of Christ. Well, not, not by, to take you into right. Heaven. Well, you're right, buddy. Hey, man, there's a break, so we're gonna move along. Okay, okay? good stuff. I keep right. calling, Alberto. All right. All right. Thank you. Hey folks, four open lines, 877-207-2276. We'll be right back. Please stay tuned. It's Matt Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Let's get to, uh, well, we have four open lines, 877-207-2276. Let's get to Pearl from Virginia. Pearl, welcome. You're on the air. Uh, sir, Matt, uh, mm -hmm. would you please give me your mind and opinion, your learnedness on Job 37.19? <laughs> where it says, teach me, of course, Job speaking to God the Almighty, what I shall say unto thee, for I cannot order my speech by reason of darkness. What I want to know is, 
after we are born again by the blood of the Lamb, can we do anything except, in other words, can we do anything to please God except that it's done through and of and because of God the Holy Spirit? You know, first of all, I'm not a King James fan speaking in these and thous, but somehow when you quote the King James, it just sounds good. I don't know what it is, <laughs> but uh, when you quote it, it, that sounds really nice. <laughs> so first of all, that was good. Um, and uh, how do we please God? We can please God by being in his will. And we are not perfect at it, but we want to obey the Lord Jesus Christ. We're to love others, John fourteen fifteen. We're to be sacrificial, patient, and kind, and these things please God. Now, of course, we don't do them perfectly, but still, God is pleased with the attempt that we have to live as Christ lived, and to seek to do what Christ did, and this is a good thing because the goal is Jesus, the standard is Jesus, and we're trying to emulate so Him. So therefore, and sir, us. and I'm being rude, interrupting you. It's all right. My feeling is that even though I am born again and washed in the blood of the Lamb, I can't say it enough because we don't hear it from our pulpits, and that God, the Lord Jesus is God, and that the only ticket, if you please, that's not a very good way to say it about God's life, he tells us in Acts 22, 28, or twenty twenty eight, God's life's his blood, his life that flowed through the veins of the Lord Jesus Christ. I just feel like what I can do, I don't care how good it is, of course not bad, but how good it is, unless it's God the Holy Spirit in me doing it, 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 it's not what pleases God or what he accepts. Well, he accepts... Um, our spiritual service of, of sacrifice and worship, which is to, um, let's see. He, oops, I got the wrong thing there. I'm going to find that. It's in Hebrews. Um, yeah, there's a spiritual service uh, of worship. Therefore, I urge you, this is Romans 12, 1. Uh, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice. Which I do every day. It says, acceptable to God, which is your serv spiritual service of worship. So yeah. he's saying that this is acceptable. Uh, presenting our bodies as a living and holy sacrifice. A sacrifice is something given to make things right, to make things better for others even. And so when he talks like this, a holy sacrifice, he's not saying that we, we repair our own sins, but that we are living sacrificially before Christ because that's what he yes. he did and so this is acceptable to God and that's what's going on okay well sir give me your opinion I pray and God Almighty has led me to pray this because I, I couldn't do it of myself of my flesh to kill everything in me but himself <laughs> yeah yeah uh huh. Yeah, I've, I've only wished that about eight thousand eight thousand times. Praying for that, I've even gotten to the point sometimes when I when I want to pray, I don't want to pray because what's the point? Not that he can't hear me, but because my prayers. How are they perfect? How are they pure? How are they doing exactly what God wants? I don't even know what to pray for sometimes. So sometimes well, I just that's sit what there. I'm, I'm, that's right. Know? But mm -hmm. I, is there any higher prayer than I can pray? Yeah, for the will of God in the person of Christ in your life. Is higher than to kill everything in me but himself. Well, and that it's, it's a good prayer. Wants. It's a good prayer. <laughs> yeah, you know, you could just do what Jesus did. You know, uh, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. I right. pray for the will right. of the Father. And the will of the Father is that our sin in us die. The will of the Father is that I go to that store tomorrow. The will of the Father is that I love my wife. The love of the Father is that that blah, blah, blah. Because the will of the Father, he's the sovereign king. 
So theologically, I like to say the will of the Father, because even Jesus submitted to the will of the Father who sent him. So I think that is what we yes. ultimately need to do. But what you said is correct. It's a great prayer. It's a high prayer to say, Lord, kill that evil in me. And But you know what? He doesn't. And, and of the oh. flesh is even, as I understand it, the flesh can do good and it can do bad, but it's not anything that God accepts. If it's the, if it's the flesh, if it's a pearl. Well, how do you know? Me, Here's the problem. I, that, that's right, sir. How do I know? Yeah. How do you know? How do you know? See, I'm, I'll pray to I'll write an article. Okay, Lord, I'm going to pray to write this article, and, and I ask to, to glorify you. How much of that prayer in my heart is so that people will look at me and think how great I am? How much is there? I, I understand you. Yeah. You know? And so, you know, it's like, oh, I know a part of that is there. That is that is wrong. Lord, please get rid of that. But then I'm thinking, get rid of it because that's what I need so I can be great again. <laughs> My heart is deceptive and deceitful. And so I just pray so much, Lord, you know, I can't even trust myself. I, can't, I don't trust my own heart. There's wickedness well, where I don't want it to Jeremiah be. Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately mm. wicked. Desperate. Who can know it? Right. That... can't get any more wicked and that's why I know I know he saved me and he's washed me and I pray every day to that the Holy Spirit will swallow me up not that the precious blood has not done it all but that he will swallow me up in the blood of the lamb and saturate me in the oil of the Holy Spirit and another that, that thing sounds I want so to ask good you... <laughs> it is so good I'd love to hear that that is awesome Oh, and then, um, well, God the Father says, if you being evil know how to give your children good gifts, how much more shall the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to them that ask him? Well, now tell me, sir, when I was born again, did I not receive the Holy Spirit? To live within did. my heart. Of course you did. But why then would does he say for them that ask? Because he's living in our heart and we're we are to ask. We are to ask God for more. And I can go on about this, but first Corinthians fourteen one, seek spiritual gifts, seek that you can prophesy. Prophesy. Ask so it's God not for wrong more to ask him for the Holy Spirit. For more of the Holy Spirit. You already have them. Okay? More of the Holy Spirit. Right. All right. Okay. okay. All right. We've got to go. I, I, I'm sorry that I've kept you so long. That's all right. Hey, folks, we have four open lines. 877-207-2276. Be right back. It's Matt Slick Live. Taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. All right, well, welcome back to the show. We're at the bottom of the hour, and I wanted to uh, just give you a little bit of a heads up. I got an email today, uh, and, you know, I think we're on to something here. Uh, this is from Joseph, and uh, that, that's as far as I'll go with his name. It says, uh, you got me today. This is from yesterday. You got me today when, with the, quote, if we only had 1,000 people donate $5 a month, close quote, comment. He said he canceled his rarely used subscription to Hulu and started sending uh, $10 a month to Carm. He says, I know uh, it will be used to further the kingdom of God. So only 998 more people. I thought I'd tell you that it's not a bad idea to keep this going. When people know there's a feasible goal, they might be quicker to jump in. Maybe not. Just an idea. I'd like to see you expand. You are a major part of my rededicating my life to the Lord and my newfound love of Reformed theology. Thanks again for all you do. God bless. Hey, thanks, Joe. So my wife showed this to me, and uh, she is now keeping track. And so uh, we've got $10 from him, and uh, we have $5 from Rook, I think, and five dollars from Ludwigson that have come in. So what we're going to do? I think we'll give it a shot. I'll just keep mentioning it that we're looking for a thousand uh, don donors at five dollars a month, and if we can have that, it would really help us out a great deal. 
and as I've said before, we have missionaries all over the world, and uh, and stuff. Five dollars a month isn't much, so if you're interested in supporting us, all you got to do is go to carm.org, C-A-R-M dot O-R-G forward slash donate, and uh, you can donate five dollars a month, and uh, and stuff like that. And if you want, you can email us and say, hey, you know, this is uh, from the call or from the radio, and or it's for the radio, or whatever you want, and we can then tie those together and know what, what's going on. So that's what we're talking about. I just want to let you guys know if you want to do that and support us, all you have to do is go to carm.org, C-A-R-M dot O-R-G forward slash donate and uh, you can help us out. Five dollars a month is a great little bit. Four open lines, if you want to give me a call, 877-207-2276. Jason from Utah. Hey, welcome there. You're on the air. Hey, Matt. Um, I just want to say God bless the last caller. He was awesome. Um, anyway, <laughs> my question is, uh, you said something about you don't like the King James yeah. Version. I yeah. would like to know why and what do you like and why do you like what you like. If you don't mind me asking. Yeah, I'm not fond of the King James because of the these and thous. It's just as simple as when you're talking to somebody, uh, the these and thous just don't fit. And so when I was, my early days of witnessing, I would quote the King James, and people would look at me like, what? I lived in Southern California. I'd go down, you know, go boogie board, go surf, uh, body surfing, talk to the people. You didn't talk in King James, Elizabethan English. You know, you didn't do that. And so I very quickly learned to uh, just avoid all that kind of stuff. And I went to a translation that turned out to be a very good one, the NASB, which is very uh, true to the Greek, and more so than even the ESV and the NIV in a lot of areas. So that's why I use the NASB uh, 95 version. I probably will switch to the 2020 pretty soon. But uh, I just say that's when that Paul the Apostle used, good enough for him, good enough for me, that kind of thing. Okay. Oh, okay. That actually changes my little perspective, too. I appreciate that. Also... I've been using the King James. I thought everybody just kind of liked the King James because of the Kind of get you out of the thing, stuff, but I, I kind of see. Right, actually, changes a lot. So, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, um, I just think it's it's important because I'm evangelistic, but a lot of people love the King James, and I'm not knocking it. I'm not saying it's bad. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's just okay. That's fine if you want to use it, then use it. And when if you want to witness using it, then witness using it. That's between you and God. My personal preference is not to have to uh, deal with uh, these and thousand and archaic terminology and phrases. So uh, I just want to remove things. Plus, the NASB, because of its literalness, taught me theology that the ESV would not have, or the NIV would not have. And so I have uh, learned some theology. I need the literalness as much as possible because I want to know as much as possible of what it says. And so I've studied Greek in college and seminary, and so you know I have a pretty good idea of what it says. And uh, so, the, like, and I have a particular verse I go to, uh, Romans five eighteen, which the NASB says, and this is, I believe, a very good translation. Through as through one transgression there resulted condemnation to all men. Even so, through one act of righteousness, there resulted justification of life to all men. That verse is problematic because of what it actually says in the Greek. And that is what it actually says in the Greek. So other versions have downplayed it as one trespass led to condemnation for all men. So one act of righteousness leads to justification of life to all men. But that's not what the Greek is, is saying. And the King James, therefore, as the one by the offense of the one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of the one, the free gift came upon all men into justification of life. It doesn't say free gift in the Greek. And when I started seeing this, I started noticing a difference, and it started me studying. And I learned, because of Romans 5.18 and the NASB, I learned about federal headship, representation. I learned about other theological perspectives and how they're tied together and how God uses words. And it set me on a course of study that was very profitable. So there you go. Okay. God, I appreciate that. I really do. Thank you. Okay. I really do. Sure. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. you have a You're good welcome. Day. All right. You too. God bless. God bless. 
All right. Hey, folks, we are wide open. If you want to give me a call, 877 And I'm actually curious, seriously, just thought about this because uh, we don't have any callers waiting, so we'll talk about this. I'm actually curious to know where you're hearing me from. Uh, if you're driving in your car and you want to call, or if you're at home listening on a radio station, I'd like to hear from where you're calling. What city and state? Just briefly. If you want to call and say, hey, just whatever, or even if you just type, just told uh, Keith, the producer, he'll just type it into a, a little a connecting uh, chat thing we have behind the scenes, and you could tell me. I'm curious, and one of the reasons is because um, I want to move towards the idea of expanding the radio show in other stations. And so I want to talk to the station owner and, and just see. Uh, it's very early, and I want to look. Which reminds me. We are looking for volunteers uh, to work with CARM. We need to use the body of Christ. Uh, I have to tell you, I'm, I'm tapped out. Uh, I've got so much to do in rewriting and writing and research and speaking and, and uh, debating, impromptu debates and discussions online, uh, doing stuff. Uh, you know, it's just I, I keep myself very, very busy. And now that I'm 65 years old, when I'm supposed to be retiring. I'm just as busy as I've ever been, if not more busy. And I, I love being able to continue. And we have uh, we have Charlie. Maybe Charlie could call up if he wants and tell us what he does. Laura could call up and tell us what she does. Uh, Luke, if he wants to call up, he could tell us what he does. He could introduce themselves to you guys really briefly for a minute or two each and say what you do. Because I want you to know out there that we do a lot and we do have people we're involved with and they are very helpful but we need more help and not just a mental kind <laughs> as my wife would say but we do need um, need help so uh, okay so someone's listening from American Fork and uh, Emma West Virginia Goochland Virginia uh, they're listening from and Terry who could that be who's listening in Sandy, Utah, and she's standing in her kitchen. And I know she's smiling right now as I talk about her. She's a great godly woman. Uh, she's great. And her husband, Eric, he's a great guy, too. They helped us out. I like to tell that every, that story every now and then. When my wife had open-heart surgery, we had to go down to Salt Lake City, and we stayed with them for two or three weeks. Uh, I'd, <laughs> I was there for a week, and then Anique, my wife, was there for another two weeks. We were there about three weeks total she was in the hospital recovering and they they put themselves out for us and they were such great people so uh, she's one of my favorite people uh, she's awesome and let's see okay so we have Clinton Iowa we have Jackson North Carolina Massachusetts uh, let's see uh, Charlie <laughs> says he's he's in FEMA region 10 I love that and uh, Leavenworth, Kansas. But you guys aren't listening on the radio. I want to know if it's actual radio stations. That's what I'm curious about. Actual uh, radio stations. And then Jimmy says the free half of South Jersey. How about that? Let's get on the air with Brian from Gastonia, North Carolina. Brian, welcome. You're on the air. Are you there? Hey, brother. Yeah, I'm there. I... I uh I'm listening from my car, and you said to call if, yeah. if we're, we're listening. So anyway, I appreciate you very much. Well, okay. You're driving down the road, listening on the radio. Good. I'm Gastonia, North Carolina. Well, that's just nice. Yeah. I hope that more people want to, are, are listening and, and smiling. And, and uh, it would be fun as if you, you waved out the window and see how many people are listening. <laughs> Way back. Where Stupid are you, thought. Matt? I live in Idaho. And near the Boise, Idaho area. Tell you what, we got a break. Hold on if you want. If not, you can hang up, but hold on. We'll talk when we get back. We have two open lines, folks. 877 207 2276. We'll be right back. Slick Live, taking your calls at 877-207-2276. Here's Matt Slick. All right, everybody, welcome back to the show. Let's see if Brian is still on, but he's not. That's okay. Brian's driving down the road, waving to you, Brian. And let's just jump over to Keith from High Point, North Carolina. Keith, welcome. You're on the air. Hello? Hello. Oh, right. I, I'm on the air. 
<laughs> yes, you are. So I'm you're calling in response to where you're listening from. Good. Yeah, where well, I'm listening from High Point. And, okay. Uh, the call, you, you mentioned something earlier about people donating $5 a month. And uh, yeah. that comes up to almost 17 cents per day. Yeah. And uh, that would be a little over $5 a month if it's 17 cents per day. I wanted to make that comment in case somebody was listening and thinking, I don't know about that, but, you know, it's a pretty cheap investment right there to to get what we're getting. But I had a question also. Mm -hmm. There was something I I think is in the book of Proverbs. Okay. That was talking about uh, something that you opened up your show about. Okay. But it's talking about the wicked and how they, they do not rest. They cannot rest because they're always seeking ways to, to do evil or something. Mm. There's a lot I forgot since I had a metal episode a couple of years ago. There's things I'm trying to relearn, and that's one of my Bible verses. Okay. And, uh, but do you do you know what I'm, t- I'm speaking about? Uh, in, somewhere in Proverbs, I, I use King James quite a bit. That's all right. And what is it in Proverbs? Let me do a search. I'm looking in the Proverbs right yeah, now. Yeah, something about the wicked, how they cannot rest or they don't sleep. Uh, oh. Because they, they're always trying to think of evil things to do. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's true. And they don't even realize it's evil. Uh, wicked cannot rest. Let's see. Bible Proverbs. So you can find something like that. And uh, I don't want to misquote it. Cause it's all right. So how about this verse, Proverbs uh, 4.16. Let's see. For they cannot sleep unless they do evil, and they are robbed of sleep unless they make someone stumble. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence, but the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn that shines brighter and brighter until the full day. Amen. Yep. That's true. Yep. Proverbs uh, Mm 4.16. Go ahead. Proverbs chapter 4, mm-hmm. 16. Yeah, 4 times 4 is 16, right? So okay. Proverbs oh, 4, yeah, 16. 4, 16, I got you. Yeah. Sounds great. Thank you very much. You're welcome very much. Well, God bless. All Thank right. you. And, Have a blessing. Okay, you too. And thanks for calling and all those in High Point, North Carolina. Thanks for calling. Appreciate it. Or listening, I should say. Four open li- uh, yeah, four open lines, 877-207-2276. Let's get to Salt Lake City. Marvellan, I guess that's the name. Welcome, you're on the air. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? So Good. Um, I love your show. And oh, uh, what I'm calling for is, um, I believe, once saved, always saved. Okay. Do you, do you believe that also? Yes. Do you oh, think yeah. that, that, that? Okay, great. <laughs> We're secure. At, We're secure in the work of Jesus. If uh, my salvation depended on my ability to stay good and stay right, I'd be in trouble right away. Yes, Amen. So, um, and there's just been so many things. My my pastor. I I love my pastor. I love the church that I go to. Can you still hear me? Yes, absolutely. Okay, and um, he's preaching. Uh, that you can lose your salvation, uh, and I. Anyways, but when he's preaching that, I told him. I went up and told him afterwards. Everything that you said just proved to me stronger that my my salvation can't be stolen from me. There's nothing I can do. Right. And um, anyways, I think that uh, maybe you know we all have our journeys in life, and so. There was a time that he preached, once saved, always saved. <laughs> ask him. Anyways. Just go up and ask him. Say, what do you have to do to keep yourself saved? Because if you do yeah. something to lose it, you do something to keep it. So what do you do? And then whatever yeah. they give, just ask for one, two, or three things and say, just to say to him, are, are you doing those things? It's a question we all have to ask. You know, if yeah. our salvation depends on well, our goodness, that, we're in trouble. Right, and I know that he knows that. I, I think that what he's trying to say is, uh, you know, if you really love God and you're serving God, and then all of a sudden you turn your back on him, and, and you know, 
you walk away and, and then you die in that moment because mm. I was saved when I was 28 and now I'm okay. 63. And, uh, but when I got saved, you know, I was only in the Word for about, uh, well, I only went to church for a short while because I was married to an atheist that refused to let me go to church. Wow. And um, so I still love God. And But anyway, long story short, I became an alcoholic. And um, I suffered with it for 30 years. Mm-hmm. So, but that whole time, I, I knew I was saved. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, you really, know, one of the things... I was just going to say... So I, I told my... Go ahead. I told my... Mm-hmm. My pastor brought me... I told my pastor, God, let me, out of my, my free will, you know, do that. I... I knew it was wrong, and uh, and I tried to quit, and I tried to quit, and I tried to quit. And I told my Mormon family, I, I still confess that I was saved, which made them just crazy mad, because <laughs> I was a drunk. <laughs> One day, my brother, yeah. he came to me with a Bible verse, because that's the only thing I'd listen to him, is if he preached out of the Bible. And um, he came to me and he said, well, Mary Ellen, you only believe in the Bible, right? And I said, yes. And he said, well, you know, there's no drunks in heaven. He, and he read it to me. Mm-hmm. And I got so excited. I was like, oh, thank God I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be... I'm going to be freed from alcoholism. <laughs> Good. I was Good way so to look excited. at it. Good for you. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I was totally excited because that mm-hmm. really is... And and that's when I quit drinking. I surrendered everything to God. I was like, oh, God, I, I knew he can free me. Mm-hmm. And I've been free from alcoholism. So my point being is, and I told my pastor, I did. I never lost my salvation in all those years. I just, I had walked away from God. I still loved God. I still prayed and continued to get drunk. And mm-hmm. But God didn't let me die before. I stopped being a drunk, and I trust you. And I, I, I'm so happy to hear that you you know that <laughs> that you believe the way I do because you know the Bible. I, I'm just learning. Yeah, I believe we're secure in Christ, as Jesus says. And I can read you the verses. And if people think that your salvation is dependent on your goodness, you know, you can't drink, you can't be a drunk, you can't. Uh, 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 you know, be a bad person and, and be a liar and still go to heaven. Well, yes and no. When the Bible talks about that, it's talking about those who abide in it, who have rejected God, and they have sought after their own sin. They're not going to be in heaven. But what do you do with those who are struggling, with those who know it's sin and are enslaved by it? Does it mean they're not going to heaven? Or does it mean they're enslaved by it and God in his patience is working through them? Because too many people exactly. think... Yeah, they, they just think that, oh, no, my salvation depends on my state of goodness. And if I become a drunk, well, then I've lost my salvation. Or if I get into the habit of lying, I've lost my salvation. So your salvation then depends on your goodness. And that is arrogant. It's arrogant. I'm not saying it's okay to sin. And we should repent of those things. But the thing is, if anybody thinks that they, in their wisdom and their ability, keep themselves right with the infinitely holy God by abiding by things and not doing bad things, then they're arrogant fools. And I'll say it again, arrogant fools. If they think that they keep themselves right with God through their effort, their sincerity, they're not doing bad things, and they're doing good things. Because it's foolishness. And then they yeah. can sit and they can judge others. Well, I'm not a drunk like you. You're going to go to hell. Why? Because you're a drunk. Because you are addicted to alcohol. Alcoholic. Well, okay. So that means that if I stop it, I get my salvation? And based on not doing something and repenting of it? And that's what gets me saved? Yeah. So how about you? Are, are you do you drink? And I'll say, no. What, what do you do? Are you perfect? No. Well, what sin is it that you are harboring in your own heart that is habitual? At that point, they should shut up because we all have those. Stubbornness, yeah. pride, 
Well, so when the Bible says, you know, the, the drunk don't get into heaven, well, let's go to that verse. It's First Corinthians, um, First Corinthians nine six, uh, six nine. Let me get to it. Whoops. Here we go. And so it says, uh, "Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, effeminate, nor homosexuals, covetous, drunkards, revilers, swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God." It says the unrighteous. Notice what he's talking about. He's talking about uh, those who are deceived. They're fornicators, idolaters, adulterers. These aren't people who love the Lord. These aren't people struggling against their sin. This is, or the thieves, or the covetous, or the drunkards. And then what he does, these people, they go, oh, you're, you, you're enslaved to alcoholism? Oh, sorry, you cannot go to heaven now. And they misapply 1 Corinthians 6, 9. They misapply it. They say, oh, you can be in a state of salvation and be a drunkard for a little while and then lose it. Can you be in a state of salvation and fornicator and be an idolater in a state of salvation and be an adulterer, be effeminate, homosexual, covetous, a thief, reviler, swindler? To what degree are they going to say which one can and can't be? What Paul is doing is talking about those who are not righteous who are not justified or not believers do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of god he's talking about those who are not saved he's not talking about those who are struggling because even paul the apostle he struggled and when you go to romans 7 he started around verse 18 for i know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh for the willing is present in me but the doing of the good is not for the good that I want, I do not do, but I practice the very evil that I do not want. But if I'm doing the very thing I do not want, I'm no longer the one doing it, but sin which dwells in me. See, he's saying it is sin in him. He's not saying he's not saved. And so yeah. people misapply so much of the word of God in their self-righteousness. And it is. Here's what Jesus says in John 10, 26. Uh, 27 my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give eternal life to them and they shall never perish that's what he says if you belong to him you can never perish but he will deal with you he'll be patient and he'll discipline you I know I've experienced yeah. well, it too well he disciplined me I, I almost died I, I got so deathly yeah. ill you yeah. know my pastor even told me that he, he prayed that I would that oh. I would get so Sorry. sick and so deathly ill, but not die. Well, okay. And I'm sorry, but there's the music. We gotta go. I'd love to just continue. I love this, you, Matt. It's so, thank you. <laughs> Help me. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, God bless. Okay. Thanks for listening. God All right. You. Hey, folks. May the Lord bless you. Pray for those pe poor people, the victims there uh, in Texas. It would be by His grace back on here tomorrow. Talk to you then. Another program powered by the Truth Network.